So children, let's do Unit 1, the best Christmas present in the world, written by Michael Morporgo. And in this video, I'll be taking the sixth part. And this is the last part of this chapter. Now, as you all know that we have reached where uh, the author Michael Morporgo has gone to meet Connie. Now, after he meets, what happens that we will be reading in this chapter. So, let's proceed with the chapter. Let's do the reading part. Take page number 15 of your honeydew. She took me into a conservatory with wicker chairs. Now, I know I have done this line in the previous video. I am doing it again. Uh, now, who is she here? The warden. Now, the warden has taken the author Michael Morpurgo to a conservatory room. I told you it's a very close inside room with wicker chairs, all cane. Okay, uh, chairs made up of cane were there and uh, uh, there were some potted plants also. And she left the author in that room and she leaves. Now, the old lady was sitting in a wheelchair. As you can see in the picture that here Connie is sitting on a wheelchair, was sitting in a wheelchair, her hands folded in her lap. Okay, she has folded her hands like this and it was resting on her lap. She had silver white hair. See the description, the, used, the adjectives used to describe her hair. Silver white hair. That means it was very shiny pinned into a wispy bun. Now, can you see the bun? Bun matlab juda bun ke rakha tha very, in a very untidy manner. She was gazing out at the garden and she was looking at the garden. Hello, I said. She turned and looked up at me vacantly. Okay, she was all confused. Okay, she gave a blank look because she doesn't know who this man is. And always remember her age, it's 101. Happy Christmas, Connie. Okay, so the author comes and he says, Happy Christmas, Connie. I went on. I found this. Okay, and the author was talking to Connie and finally he uh, took that envelope and he is telling to Connie that I have found this envelope. I think it's yours. As I was speaking her, eyes never left my face and the moment he gave that envelope she was continuously staring at that man because that particular envelope had some familiarity i opened the tin box and gave it to her that was the moment her eyes lit up with recognition and her face became suffused with a sudden glow of happiness and the moment he has shown that tin box in which that envelope was kept. Uh, he could see that uh, smile and the shine on her face. Desk about how I had found it. Okay, so he first explained about the whole story, how he got this tin box, about the roll top desk, about his visit uh, to uh, her building which got fire and it has got completely damaged. So he was giving the brief explanation about all that thing. But I don't think she was listening. But author was knowing that she is not listening whatever he was explaining to her. For a while, she said nothing but stroked the letter tenderly with her fingertips. She was so shocked that what she was But one thing was sure, she recognized that letter of her husband which was so dear to her suddenly she reached out and took my hand okay she was sitting on that wheelchair and suddenly usne author ka haath pakda. her eyes were filled with tears you told me you would come home by christmas dearest children you remember the last line of that letter he made a promise to his wife that we will be together soon so she remembered that line which her husband has written. So, if there were tears in her eyes and she's telling to the author which she misunderstood as a husband. You told me you would come home by Christmas, dearest. And here you are, the best Christmas present in the world. So, you all came to know what is the best Christmas present. The whole story was talking about it. And finally, who is that present? She thinks that 
the author Michael Morpurgo is her husband and she feels that this is the best Christmas present she could ever receive. Come closer Jim Deere. See she is calling the author also by her husband's name. Jim Deere sit down. I sat down beside her and she kissed my cheek. I read your letters so often Jim. Okay, so now Connie is telling her that in his absence she used to read this letter so often. I wanted to hear your voice in my head. She was waiting for her husband and she was wanting to hear her husband's sound. It always made me feel you were with me and now you are. Now you are back. You can read it to me yourself. Would you do that for me, Jim dear? So she is talking to her husband but the person sitting next to her is not her husband but it's Michael Morpurgo, the author. I just want to hear your voice again. I would love that so much. And then perhaps we will have some tea. I have made you a nice Christmas cake, marzipan all around. So all throughout the year in her husband's absence, she used to make this cake. And you remember he has given this cake to Hans Wolf also. Uh, while writing the letter, he has mentioned that he, Hans Wolf, he loved that cake. I know how much you love Marzipan, a beautiful and interesting story written by Michael Morpurgo. I'm sure you also love this chapter. So, let's do comprehension check. So, let's do comprehension check page number 16. The first question is, who did Connie McPherson think her visitor was? Connie thought that her visitor was her own husband, Jim McPherson. She misunderstood that the author was her husband. Now, because of did, this thing we will be writing as thought. Just remember this. Second one, which sentence in the text shows that the visitor did not try to hide his identity? As we were reading, we know that he tried to explain everything about the roll top desk, but she was not listening. The sentence which shows that the visitor did not try to hide his identity is, I explained about the desk, about how I had found it, but I don't think she was listening. Now we have working with the text. First one is, for how long do you think Connie had kept Jim's letter? Give reasons for your answer. Connie had kept Jim's letter till January 25th, 1915. The letter was dated December 26, 1914. Why do you think the desk had been sold and when? The desk must have been sold when Connie's house had burnt. The desk had been damaged by fire as well as water. Why do Jim and Hans think that games or sports are good ways of resolving conflicts? Resolving means solving. Do you agree with that? Jim and Hans were soldiers and were warm-hearted. They were very loving. They had seen the sufferings of war. So it was natural for them to hate war. They wanted a peaceful solution to settle disputes. Games or sports, they said, were good ways of resolving conflicts. I completely agree with them. And I hope, children, you also agree with that. Question number four. Do you think the soldiers of the two armies are like each other or different from each other? Find evidence from the story to support your answer. The soldiers of the two armies are alike. In many ways, they love peace and hate war. Both the armies celebrated Christmas with each other. They were like-minded, that's why both of them cooperated and supported each other. They shared foods and drinks. They laughed, played and talked with each other. They played a game of football for which both hands and Jim cheered and clapped hands. They also exchanged carols at night. Moreover, they had the same view that was only broad destruction. 
and they hoped each would be alive to see his family. Fifth one, mention the various ways in which the British and the German soldiers become friends and find things in common at Christmas. The British and the German soldiers belonged to different camps. They were enemies in war. But after all, they were human beings and therefore they had similar feelings. They shared the festive spirit of the Christmas. They got over hatred and played games, feasted and drank like good friends. Both hated war. See that line is repeated again and again. Both were anxious to go back to their families at the end of war. What is Connie's Christmas present? Why is it the best Christmas present in the world? Connie thought that Jim had come back home from war. Okay, usko to yehi laga ki uska husband wapas a gaya. She mistook the author for Jim. She had been waiting for her husband Jim. So the coming home of Jim was the best Christmas present in the world for her. Last question. Do you think the title of the story is suitable for it? Can you think of any other title? The title of the story is the most suitable. That's what I feel and I think you also feel the same. For the old Connie, no other present could have given her such joy as the coming home of Jim, her husband. She got the greatest happiness of her life. Since the story revolves around Christmas, the alternate title of the story could be War and Peace or Christmas Gift. See, this is my views. If you want, you can suggest some other title too. But neither can be a match to the present title. So homework for today's session is, you will be writing comprehension check page number 19. Only two questions are there that you will be writing in notebook. Then working with the text, question number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. There are total 7 questions that also you will be writing in notebook. Working with language, page number 19, question number 4, you will be doing in the textbook itself. Thank you and may God bless you.